Good evening, Internet. Hope we're all well out there. As you can see, I've got a new camera. And to celebrate, I've got an enormous spot. But uh, no matter, we're going to make a video anyway. I thought, uh, seeing as I've been covering Sophie Lloyd's playing style in this month's blog, that I'd um, try and do a little video post to explain some of the things that, um, that I put in there that maybe didn't come across too well in the text. Uh, so, we're going to begin with two main scales to demonstrate these ideas with. A minor pentatonic. Old friend. And uh, the G major scale, the three notes per string. Uh, we're going to be using it mostly in its alter ego as the Dorian mode, but... Um, if you're not familiar with that, don't worry too much about that for now. Uh, now, some simple ideas to get you started with this. Uh, an awful lot of her playing revolves around repeating kind of stacked patterns, not truly sequencing, but this stack idea. Now, the simplest one to begin with is stacked sixes. What I'm doing here is I'm playing the E and then A string notes, then the A and the D. So I'm getting E, A, A, D. Now you run this all together and it does actually sound pretty good. But it's really a very, very simple affair. Obviously you can take this up an octave and run it from the 15th fret. Now I'm not actually doing anything clever at this point, this is all just absolutely bog standard common or garden alternate picking. Down, up, down, up, down, up. There are more clever and subtle ways that you can get into it, but to begin with, I would recommend I recommend learning that. Once you've learned the rules, then you can break them more effectively. Um, obviously also try it descending. Now, one thing to be aware of is thumb position, and this is something that nobody seems to really talk about. If you are, like me, somebody who plays primarily with a thumb over the top of the neck... <laughs> Well, that's great for bending the vibrato and that kind of stuff, but it really doesn't help me much with, with reach. And you'll notice that I was coming down there. Around right about when I hit the D string to the A, that's when I need to pivot my thumb around from coming over the top of the neck to coming around the back of the neck to give me a bit more of reach. So coming down isn't always quite as simple as, as going up. I'd also recommend trying these legato, so hammer-ons on the way up. Pull-offs on the way back down. careful with your thumb position when you're doing the pull-offs because you're going to have to range for just the right amount of tension so that when you pull off, obviously it's not a lift like so, you actually feel the strong tip of the finger. Yeah, nice strong pull-off. Um, any, anybody wants to leave pull-off jokes, please do leave them in the comments. Um, that's where they belong. <laughs> so, picked. <laughs> There we go. Right. Um, once you've got the hang of that, the next trick that she uses is to stack 12s. So in this case, I'm going E, A, D, G, and then G, E, D. So 12 notes. And then jump back to the D string. Another 12. So I'm still getting a kind of an overlap sound. Now the advantage of doing this is that you can actually fit this into one bar. Um, if you're doing sixes and you're doing six to a beat, you're doing one and a one and a two and a two and a three and a three and a four and a four and a five and a five and a five and that's where our problem is. Do it twelve. One and a one and a two and a two and a three and a three and a four 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 and a four
much easier to, uh, to squeeze into a bar there um, and I would recommend that when you're practicing these ideas whether you're doing them um, picked or legato or however you're doing them obviously doing them every, every key get used to the feels of different areas of the fretboard try and do it with some rhythmic context now what I mean by this is um, a little trick I do with my students called two bars on two bars off you're going to play two bars of a power chord groove followed by two bars of an improvisation idea now in this instance my power chord will be an A because I'm choosing this to represent A Dorian and my improvisation idea will be the stack 12s so I'm going to count in without ever losing the pulse, which of course is really, really important when you're playing. Right, moving on a little bit now, we also have a tapping lick that um, I've tapped out, and I'm going to explain this in a little bit. Now, what she does in this is it's a mixture of the E minor scale. It does bring a naughty C sharp in there, but it's forgettable, it's only in passing. Now, meantime, the right hand is going to tap the pattern of the A minor pentatonic. these together we get speed that up and as I say over an A power chord that will work out as A Dorian. Now I'm playing that in 16th or 30 seconds I suppose. So we think of it as one and a one and a two and I'd also recommend learning it backwards. If you've learned it going down, you may as well just switch everything and go up. So quite a useful little trick that one. Okay, now the next thing that we're going to check out is a little descending A minor idea. Now what she's doing is moving across two strings. Um, we're using the E and the B strings. And as we know, the A natural minor scale is A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So nothing too tricky to remember there. I'm going to start on the G. And I'm going to pull off, pick the 15th. That's the G. Pull off to the F on the 13th. Pull off again to the 12th. That's the E. And then I'm going to hit the 15th fret on the B, back to the 12th fret on the high E. And I'm going to move that insane pattern down at the scale degree. 13, so going from the F, 13, 12, 10, 13, back to 10. And then I'm just going to move that sequentially down through the scale. Now when I get here, I'm going to jump strings. I'm going to start off on the G note on the 8th fret of the B string. Pull off A, 6, 5, 7, 5, G, 5th row on the B. And then I'm going to finish off by doing a slide from 5th to 7th on the G. Now, another little trick that she uses quite a lot of is string skipping. And this again, this is something that we can nick and, uh, and use. So what I've got here, I'm going to use A minor pentatonic up here at the 17th fret. And I'm going to play the E and the G strings first. Followed by the B and the D strings. So there's my first bar. You see straight away, even as though it's just playing old dear old A minor pentatonic, it still sounds quite wild and exotic. Then I'm going to play G to A, and then D to low E. And then finish off with a little. So that 
a 17th fret on the D, 19th fret on the A, hammer 17 to 19 on the D strings, that's actually taking me back to my root note, and then bend on the 19th fret G, and pull off to the 19th to the 17th fret G, 19th fret D, 17th fret G, and then we we'll slide up to the root note on the 22nd fret of the B. Again, move that around, try it in any key, it's a great little lick to have. And then we're going to wrap things up with something that may be familiar to any of you who've read my book and um, Progressive Guitar Training, which I have over there, but I don't mind. <laughs> which is when you're moving pen laterally through pentatonics. Now, what we're going to do, I'll, I'll show you the full bit first. All this is, is the magic three notes. Now, if you're familiar with any of my teachings, you'll know that the magic three notes in a minor pentatonic are these. And that they are magic simply because they are easy. Because they're easy, everybody plays them. And because everybody plays them, everybody expects to hear them. So, on and on the cycle goes. And then I'm going to move this into the second position of A minor pentatonic. That one. And then my magic three notes converts to being... That's a 10th fret to 8th fret on the B, 9th fret on the G, 8th fret on the B. Then here's into position 3. And here are my magic three notes. 13 to 10 on the B string, 12th fret G, 10th fret on the B. So. And then here's position 4, minor pentatonic. And my magic three notes are here, 15 to 13 on the B, 14 on the G, 13 on the B. And then we've got a little pedal steel bend here. So that's 15th fret on the B, 15th fret on the E, back to 15th fret on the B. And we're going to let that come down. And then pull off 15 to 13 on the B down to my root note, 14th fret on the G, and then bounce back to that minor third, C note, on the 13th fret B, and then the 14th fret G to finish off. So there we go, I hope that's been of use, and um, well, yeah, this is the first time I've done anything like this, so if you've enjoyed it, then please do click like, um, Click like and smash that subscribe, and yeah, all that. <laughs> and I will endeavour to do that kind of thing with a straight face. Um, meantime, happy practicing. I'll see you again soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.